Hey yo, where are all my gamers at? This one's for you. Third Eye Collective just got a new toy for its clients to play with, and uh, it's a straight up Area 51 arcade cabinet. Atari sold 20,000 of these bad boys, and we got one right here. So, without further ado, let's get the f into it. So let me give you guys a little bit of backstory about what the video game landscape looked like back in 1993. Doom came out on the PC, the last action hero on NES was just tearing up the sales charts, and Midway had an unprecedented commercial smash on their hands with the release of Mortal Kombat 2 in arcades. Atari needed a hit bad without a single profitable video game for years and losing most of their top developers to rival Electronic Arts. They knew they needed to make a light gun game, but they had no idea what to do, so they entrusted the development externally to Mesa Logic head Rob Weatherby. Weatherby successfully pitched an Area 51 style concept from a popular science article called Secrets of Groom Lake to Atari, and the rest is pretty much history. So now the original idea was to have the game's data streamed off a CD using the then popular Cinepak compression technology, but that would have only delivered a widescreen letterbox display. So what they ended up doing is used a modified Atari Jaguar console motherboard interfaced with a hard drive and then their own internal compression software. This game is an on-rails shooter set against 3D pre-rendered backdrops. Think about what I said for just a second. Anyone doing any kind of 3D rendering back in 1993 were doing it on computers with less power than most refrigerators these days. There's 23 minutes of video on this one gigabyte hard drive that ships in the cab. All the motion capture actors in this video game were digitized into sprites, while interestingly, the enemies were created with stop motion animation. The amount of rendering required to make this game happen in 1993 is ridiculous. They started animating and rendering the game out in Texas, but the raw horsepower required to do it all became more time than they had to spend. So they hit up Atari, who were sitting on hella silicon graphics workstations, which are computers designed uh, specifically to make video games on, and coordinated gaining access to all of their systems in the building after hours when other teams weren't using the computers. Every night the team at Mesa Logic would just turn all the CGI computers at Atari into a huge render farm. I mean, that's freaking sweet. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, where the hell can I get one of those badass Area 51 magnets for my fridge, right? <laughs> no. According to Robert Rowe, the total cost of animating and coding Area 51 was only $2,500. That's equivalent to $4,015 in 2018 insane. The game ended up being a huge hit for Atari, selling over 20,000 units and revealed that the console ports for the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn had way above average sales compared to other home console ports of light gun games. So yeah, it's not that hard, the graphics are well done, it's fast paced, it's got tons of secret rooms, whatever. This brings me to my next point. The ROM we have loaded on the hard drive here is actually the ROM of Area 51 and Maximum Force Duo which was the follow-up to Area 51 and blew up in its own right, so they eventually just had the cabs out there in arcades with both games bundled together. You guys can imagine my excitement when this showed up because after playing the game as a kid and never getting very far without having to spend a few dollars and quarters, it's set to free play mode and you can just make it to the end no problem. But upon looking up the secrets and Easter eggs, the one I wanted to see the most does not work in this cabinet with the current patch of the ROM loaded onto this drive and I'll explain when you jump the game off, if you don't shoot a single enemy and instead shoot the first three stars members that pop up, it loads the easter egg called Cron Hunter. This allows you to play quote unquote as the alien by changing the graphics to look all weird. This footage right here on screen I snagged off YouTube so you guys could see what it looks like when you enable it. The Atari Jaguar board used here can support 16-bit video streams. The original Area 51 ROM uses one 15-bit stream for the main video and an additional one-bit stream for the Cron Hunter mode palette corruption. When they bundled Maximum Force in Area 51 and released it, Area 51 was re-encoded using the Maximum Force system, so Cron Hunter mode no longer works perfectly on this patch. You can see here, once I trigger the Easter egg, the playback is regular, but we still get the change in sprites like the bullets here on the side and the heart rate monitor going faster in the bottom left-hand corner here. A guy named Rick Haynes currently holds the official world record for Area 51 with a score of 2,188,400 points posted on April 10th, 1999. Also, the music was done by Michael Stein and not Gianna Pearson, even though she's listed in the credits at the end. 
She was pissed that Robert Rao hired an outside guy. She was on staff, but Rob didn't like her music. <laughs> I'm Ben Scarborough, and thank you for watching today's video. It's number seven in my 1365 one YouTube a day video challenge. Like this video so your boy can bring you more arcade video game reviews. I'm not really sure where we're gonna find any more arcade games to review, but I don't know, maybe we'll find one around here laying around, whatever. I'll see you guys later, peace.